uh, there's a bit of shade for the pineapple. It does like a bit of shade, not too much. But, you know, you can clearly see the pineapple rose. The cassava is re-sprouting a bit above the pineapple. You know, there's nobody clogging up the pineapple. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive, energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up YouTube? Welcome to the Agroforestry Academy channel. Today I want to give you a bit of an update of an agroforestry system focusing on pineapple and bananas production. I've already done other videos in this system and it is now 11 months old. So you can see a bit of the overview, what it looks like. And what's going on here right now is that um, I'm managing the system. You know, I'm weeding a bit, pruning some trees that need to be pruned again. And there's a lot of cassava planted. And I'm using the cassava more as a service crop than an actual cash crop. Although I am harvesting some. Um, I'm not really worried about it because actually my main crop is the pineapple. That's what I want to to focus on. So what's happening is that I'm relentlessly pruning the cassava, you know, not worrying about uh, if it's going to continue strong, if it's going to produce well or not. Whatever I harvest, you know, whatever cassava harvest I have, I'm considering it as a bonus, you know, because I... I'm just waiting for the pineapple, so whatever I harvest before, it's a bonus for me. So I've I've already managed most of the system, so I'm going to give you a bit of a look, a view of what the system looks like before managing. So let me give you a bit of a, let me change the camera here. So this is the system as it looks, you know, before I go in and weed and prune what needs to be pruned. What was planted here besides the pineapple was sorghum. You can see it's here. The sorghum has already been pruned two or three times. And this is just a re-sprout. That's why it's not so tall. You know, this one is like 2.2 2 meters tall. But this baby grows up to 4 meters easily. There's cassava which you can see has suffered recently from, from a bit of the, the leaf cutter ants work. I have a lot of problems with leaf cutters here. So actually that's one of the reasons why I don't worry much about the cassava because I know the cassava is gonna be, you know, the leaf cutters are gonna come pounding on the cassava. And then there are some weeds, you know, this is a, a malva, you know, it's a, from the Malvasi family and all sorts of weeds there's some grass there's some pigeon pea that i planted this will be pruned and and then in our tree rows we've got this is pterogeny meetings it's our emergent layer tree but it's uh it's still going to take another year to reach the emergent layer there's bananas and then there's all sorts of other trees in the middle we've got senna spectabilis we've got um sugar apple lots of things and then i have the trees that were already here you know when i started planting there's one you can see this dark green plant this is called kambuata it's from the sapindasi family you can see that they were pruned quite radically here at about 1.5 meters from the ground i've got two of them so you know i, I i'm gonna start uh, selecting only one main stem so that they don't clog up the system too much that's something you want you want your trees to be to behave like they do in a forest you know you want them to be you know single stem plants otherwise they take up too much space uh, so yeah that's what we got to do there's some trees here that were pruned as well a bit higher 
and they already need a bit of pruning again. You can see that this is also Camboata. It's flowering, so it's a good moment to prune it. Uh, because what's going to happen now, you know, these trees, they lose their leaves when they, when they, when they set fruit. They lose lots of leaves. And since I want it to remain green, you know, by pruning it, I'm going to skip the flowering and, and fruit setting phase and, and stimulate it to re-sprout and to produce new shoots. And that's going to maintain it, you know, dark green. It's not going to lose its leaves, but rather produce new leaves. And this is the place that was managed recently. You know, you can see there's a big difference right managed place quickly not managed you know so this this spot here that's not managed should look like this you know after i go in you can see that there's a there's a bit of shade for the pineapple it does like a bit of shade not too much but you know you can clearly see the pineapple rows the cassava is re-sprouting a bit above the pineapple you know there's nobody clogging up the pineapple strata the pineapple layer this is an important concept if you have a main crop you don't want to allow anyone anyone to mess with it so i don't want other plants in the layer of my pineapple i want the bottom layer to be for my pineapple and the pineapple alone so whatever else is here needs to be a bit above it so you know i've got the cassava and i've got the pigeon pea and they need to sprout you know to maintain their canopy above the, the pineapple plant this is a this is an important concept and so let's go right ahead and and give the system a bit of a a bit of a prune a bit of a an organization i'm gonna set my camera here in the tripod and i'm gonna do it so let's see what happened after my work today and this is it guys all right oops there's a sorghum here that wasn't pruned quickly there you go <laughs> there you go that was the last one and it got stuck here go down Wow, this is a stubborn one. It doesn't want to go to the soil. There you go. So, this is what it looks like now. Now, I'm not completely finished. I still need to prune these trees, but I'm going to leave that for another video because that deserves a video for its, you know, all by itself. You know, a video about making trees manageable and keeping them manageable. That's a... That's a, an important concept. So what I'm going to do with you guys now before going, before wrapping it up is I'm going to quickly, you know, just pass by quickly on the, on my row of trees to see what it looks like and, you know, cut some dead leaves from the bananas. And that's about it. One important concept, you know, always start by weeding. Okay. The reason for that is simple. You're going to be bringing down lots of organic matter on the soil with your prunings, you know. So I've got the pigeon pea pruning, I've got the sorghum pruning, and then the trees are, you know, all these trees, they're going to bring down lots of organic matter. They're the ones who are really going to cover the soil. If I haven't, if I don't weed before putting all this organic matter on the soil, I won't be able to weed it afterwards because I'm going to cover the weeds with organic matter and that's only going to strengthen them because, you know, I'm, I'm putting new, more nutrients and in, in, in protecting the weeds. That's something you really don't want to. So weed first, organic matter, 
later. Um, so I've got my machete here and the there's not much I need to do here in my row of trees, but the banana plants, they've got some dead leaves. And look, something very important. You know, you don't you don't take out banana leaves if they're still green, okay? The only time you, you take down banana leaves, you cut them off, is when they've they're broken. That's the only reason to take them out, you know? If they're not broken, if they're still if they still have some green left in them, you should leave them on because banana plants they oh, I think I broke one. No, it's fine. Banana plants they only have so many leaves they can shoot. And you want to allow them, you know, to shoot all the leaves they can to you know, so they they can produce a nice bunch. Now this although this leaf is still alive. There's no reason for leaving it because it's already broken here, so I can take it out. You know, that's the only time I'm going to take out a, a, a leaf that's still alive. You know, my machete is not so sharp right now. I usually sharpen my machete every day, but what happens is that I am not allowed to go to the house here in the farm because because I was out from the city for a few weeks. So due to this coronavirus outbreak, I made a commitment with the people here that I'm not gonna get in contact with anyone. So I just come to my field and go back to the city. And that's gonna go on for 14 days. So I need a, I need to find a new stone for sharpening my machete because I can't work like this. <laughs> Always sharpen your machete, people, you know, twice a day at least once a day so you know these trees they all need a bit of organization but like i said this is going to be for another video i'm going to save them for another video now then there's the matter of the castor beans the castor beans i'm gonna i'm just gonna prune them because it's uh they're too weak and they're already you know the banana is occupying the same layer as they are although the castor beans they're, they're supposed to be an emergent plant and these bananas, I think these are burrito bananas. They're not emergent, but yeah, the castor bean is just too weak. It's beginning to flower. It's not gonna give you anything else. So, you know, just a quick blow of the machete. If you're doing, uh, if you're pruning plants with a machete, always, always, hit them from the bottom up if you hit them from the top down you're gonna split the trunk of the plant so i'm gonna come afterwards and organize this material this one is sena spectabilis planted from seed one year old this is you know it's 2.2 2.5 meters um they grow a lot you the, the genus Santa is is really really special all right you should really be working with them if you have them available in your place here i've got some mexican sunflower which has already gone to seed this was a big mistake because i should have pruned it before it seeded but now it's too late um th I don't, this this one wasn't planted i think it, it came here spontaneously yeah i'm gonna have to take it out this is bad it's gonna be titania sprouting all around i love it i love titania but uh, it needs to be planted organizedly but otherwise you know it just uh, wrecks havoc everywhere um this is bicholer acids that gives a, this r a red seed with a that the Indians used to paint their bodies. Yeah, there's not much to do here. It's basically pruning the castor beans and then organizing the trees. I'm gonna do another video about organizing the trees. So for now we're gonna we're gonna leave it at this. I thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't 
do subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, comment on the videos. You know, this is the best way you can help us out with our channel and, you know, spread the word around if you like it, if you know people who, who might enjoy our content, you know, bring them to our channel. We're releasing content weekly, every Saturday. And that's it. You know, actually, before wrapping up, I forgot I wanted to show you something. Um, this is another part of the field. It doesn't look so good. The pineapples are weaker here. They didn't develop so well. Um, can't be quite sure why. There's a, there's a really big difference. This is the, the weakest plot of, the, of this field. This field is about 1,200 meters, square meters in size. And this, this one is a uh, 100 meters plot and it's the weakest plot of the field i can only imagine it was uh, you know not enough manure but what happens is that i have my first pineapples from this field check it out they're small and oh this one already fell but they i ate one today and they are delicious now they flower they're, they're really small <laughs> They're like probably a hundred grams or something. These babies, they flowered when they are, they were six months old. So they flowered, you know, a lot earlier than, than they should. You know, pineapple should be flowering with 14 months at least. But these babies came, you know, they came a bit earlier. I don't know why, but they did. So, you know, I'm glad to have some, some early pineapple. It's, uh, it's small, but it's, absolutely delicious and yeah i just wanted to show you this w one interesting thing about pineapple when they flower too small you're not going to get pups from them all right they're just going to give you the fruit and no pups you can see that there are no pups around so it's a pity and i think many of these are going to be like that because like i said they're weak they're not growing well but you know there's some that are and I'm gonna have some decent pineapple from here. All right, so now for real. This is Felipe for the Agroforestry Academy, signing out.